What's going on guys, Nani Moto here, your man, your number one for all things moto. Today I have in front of me Built's brand new Vertex, another exclusive from Cycle Gear and Revzilla. Let's hop on in, let's check out its features, we'll take a look at its performance, then we'll slam it with a naughty go or naughty no seal of approval. Stay with me folks. Now folks, when we go ahead and we take a look at this helmet, I'm gonna turn it on its side. We can definitely see how it's an elongated shell, longer front to back, making it definitely a sport focused lid, something that screams speed you can already see at its profile. Now folks, sticking along with speed, I definitely see some AGV kind of sport inspiration coming from this uh, built vertex. Let's take a look at this chin bar. I'm going to put this helmet perfectly perpendicular up and down and I see a very aggressive chin bar that's very reminiscent of AGV's Hawkbill Curve. Now folks, built in 2020 and 2021 has a brand new injection molded polycarbonate shell. This one here comes with a DOT and ECE rating uh, certification right there on the back. Now folks, anytime Naughty comes across a DOT and ECE rated polycarbonate shell, I'm gonna give it a quick test. This is what I like to do. I grab the helmet firmly at the, firmly at the rear, firmly at the front, and I squeeze as hard as I can to the center to see if we have any significant flex. When I just flex that helmet there, I noticed a lot of pushback. This is definitely an increase in uh, protection going from Built's predecessors and Built's last gen models of helmets. So I definitely appreciate that coming from built guys. Now another test I like to do is I do the exact same thing only we're gonna flex the helmet from left to right. Now folks, I did recognize some decent flex coming from the left and the right of the helmet. That's most likely due to this elongated intermediate oval design. What we have to do is stretch that shell to make it longer and more appropriate for your fit. Now folks, now that we've talked about the shell, let's stick with the ventilation. You have a tri-vent package with a single position uh, crown ventilation setup up here, and I'm not a huge fan of these ventilation switches. If we look at these massive intake divots, those, believe it or not, add to wind noise. Taking a look at the chin ventilation, this one here is also a single position switch. You will be stuck open or closed in all of your ventilation switches on the built vertex. Now folks, what I really like coming from Built's brand new line of helmets is that their face shields are just of a better quality. Going through all of the helmets, we can definitely see even the Sedici Strata, the Built Vertex, the Built Charger, they all have these really robust face shields. This one here does not have a pin lock accessory uh, option, but it does have some really nice detents in the shield, allowing for cracking of the shield, like a nice city switch or demist switch, all the way up to a mid-level and full open, which is really nice. Um, something that we didn't see from City G Strata 2. At the rear of the helmet, folks, we do have a dual passive exhaust, which means it's stuck open all the time. We're not gonna be able to close our exhaust. Personally, I enjoy the ability to close up my helmet completely with the option of an active exhaust vent. So if you ever get caught in the rain, it's a great option to go ahead and be able to close up your helmet entirely to stop any unwanted creep of water or condensation. Now this helmet coming in with the DOT and ECE rating, we most likely are not going to see a drop down internal sun visor in a sub 100 full face polycarbonate helmet, which we do not have here in the built vertex. And folks, one last addition to the face shield. This is listed on the spec sheet for Cycle Gear and Revzilla. They love to talk about their dual spring face shield design. What that is exactly, when you put your face shield down in the lock position, there are springs designed to pull that face shield up firmly against your gasket, making sure you have a watertight and windproof seal. Now folks, moving into the inside of the helmet, taking a look at the comfort liner, I automatically see an immediate upgrade in quality coming from Built's later lines. Um, it seems to be nice and soft and uh, quite forgiving, which might make for a loose fit. 
Now, I would have liked to have seen built with their new models that they were actually painting the uh, EPS foam on the inside black so we can do those biannual and annual helmet inspections. Moving into the cheek pads, I'm gonna see if built included speaker cups for us going into 2021 and I already checked before, <laughs> they absolutely did. They are quite large, which again is gonna accommodate up to a 45 millimeter audio driver. Now guys, one thing I did wanna mention and definitely bring to your attention, there is no talk whatsoever on all advertisement um, about the density of the EPS layer uh, on the inside. Is it a dual density, is it a tri-density, or is it a single density foam? We just don't know in this particular case. One other thing that does concern Naughty is there is no talk of shell sizing. So is this a dual shell size? I definitely believe so. When I took it out for a ride, I did kind of feel that the extra large was a little oversized for my head. Normally I am in a large slash extra large. In this case, it definitely seemed it fit like a double extra large. If you are a smaller stature rider, you may be uh, privy to a bobblehead effect if wearing a larger helmet size within the range, somewhere around a large, extra large. You actually might have a one to two size larger shell on your head, believe it or not. Typically, when I'm riding, my helmets are so tight, and that's due to personal preference, my cheeks look like something like this. In this case, I had plenty of room to chew gum, speak, take a phone call, whatever the case is. So it was really nice, I did enjoy that from Bill. Part of my testing when I took this out yesterday, I took it up to highway speeds and I tested its aerodynamics. Now, when checking your blind spots or making a lane change, it was on rails. So aerodynamic shell, we do have. Out on the road, you're gonna have a very large field of vision with this brand new redesigned face shield, allowing you to check your peripherals with almost little to no head movement. At speed in a tuck, this helmet again is on rails. At highway speeds and above, we can count on little to no buffeting. Overall guys, when I got home after my ride, I was pleasantly surprised at this built Vertex coming in again at that under $100 price point. You do have some really nice features. You do have some really nice comfort. It is not quiet, unfortunately, and that's gonna go directly into quality of materials and density of materials. This just here is a polycarbonate shell, a very thin, very non-dense material that won't button up too much wind or road noise, so keep that in mind. Now to answer everyone's question on the Naughty No or Naughty Go scale, what is the built vertex? And I'm gonna have to be honest with you, it is a Naughty No. Any helmet, polycarbonate, ECE, DOT rated, coming in at that under $100 price point, that scares me tremendously. Any lid that I have is either Snell, Fibrous, or an amalgamation of both. I do not trust a DOT or ECE rating. We need to get away from plastic material as helmets in general, and it needs to happen now. We cannot afford to take risks on our life, on our head, and put it in a salad bowl. We need a fibrous material to absorb that kinetic impact, to spread and spider web that force all around the helmet. Subsequently, any force left will travel into the EPS foam. If there is any force left after that impact has traveled through the helmet, Hopefully, and we pray that it's not enough to cause you, the rider, any serious injuries. Folks, thank you so much for sticking around. This has been Naughty Moto with the review of the Built Vertex. Guys, if you liked the content, please like. If you loved the content, please sub. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop it down in the comment section below, and we'll see you next time. Kind of an intermediate to, uh, oops. Take a look at this chin bar right here. It's de definitely in a, oh my God. In 2021 is imploring their, imploring? 2020 and 2021, uh, oops. All right, folks, now what I really like coming from Built's 2020 and 2021, oh my God. <laughs>